I'm very fond of that wee record. That's Eliza Doolittle, not perhaps her real name. Could be an adopted stage name. And that's a song called Rollerblades. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the programme. It's a Wednesday. The number to ring if you want to contact this programme is 08459 555678. The email address, of course, as always, is jerry.anderson at bbc.co.uk. And the text messaging service, for those of you out there who are nice, is 08... What is it? 08771? What is it? Uh, Hello, oh eight double seven one. I always forget that. Eight one seven seven one. Eight one double seven one. Sorry, yeah, yeah. I, I keep almost giving people my mobile number, and they don't want it. Eight one double seven one. Is that it? That's for the text messaging service. And by the way, this past couple of days, I haven't looked at any of the texts. I go through that kind of period after a while, but I, I'm going to look at them today. I promise. No matter what. Is there what. any point in me printing them out? Yes, please do. Okay. I'm going to read them out today. Uh, right. Disturbing news today. Have you seen in the paper, apart from Northern Ireland's, uh, well, I'd say possible disappointment, uh, a one one draw against the Faroe Islands. More of that later. I uh, see Kerry Katona has uh, challenged Jordan to a fist fight. <laughs> have, you, have you seen that? Not at all. <laughs> Can you imagine that? No. Uh, something else I want to talk about. Now, two things I want to talk to you about in particular. Yes. Uh, people are concerned about your Facebook profile. That's... Not yes, me. That's what I want to find out. A ruckus is emerging on Facebook. A person or a person unknown has created a profile under the name of Sean Coyle, claiming to be the man himself. Have you been catching up on technology or is someone impersonating you? Do you they want to know, is it you or what? Is it you? I've already said that. I know, but I want to clear it up. Is yes, it you or is it, it not? Is not me. It is not him. It's not me. Okay, but that's important because, you know, people post messages. Yes, I know. They, it. they think it's from you. No. And it's terrible. Sure. And I think it should be true. They, they did that to me for a while. Mm-hmm. They did, did that they? to me for a while. There was a man called Jerry Anderson in America, and he discovered there was a huge interest in him. <laughs> <laughs> so he kept saying things that were unacceptable, and I have to say inappropriate. Uh, Sean, I've been thinking a lot over this past couple of days about the relationship that I have with staff here. Who have we got in today? Janet. Where's Emma? Emma has decided not to come down anymore. I noticed she hasn't been here yes. for quite a while. Why? Yeah. why is, was this an arbitrary decision, or was it a decision made by management? Or what? What's going on here? It, it, she doesn't want to be here. Uh, Janet tells me management. Why? Have they decided that she's not to be with us? What seems to be the trouble? Janet's waving her hands in the air. Uh huh. Right. So, <laughs> well, I thought it was personal her because hair out. Emma hasn't been the same to me, and I, 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 I imagine that perhaps I've done something to uh, annoy her. Uh, could this be one of the reasons why she no longer wants to be down here? Uh, Janet seems quiet, mm-hmm. and you seem well defensive. So, what I was thinking was, I think our relationship is broken down because you know. Let me just explain to the listeners: we do not share the same room, even though it may sound as if we share the same room. We don't. I sit here in a little cubicle and uh, there's a a glass window in front of me and these two people are behind it. And they're quite a way away because they don't put on the lights because I insist they don't be put on because then I can see them. So I don't actually see them. I see shadows in there. And I don't think it's good enough for the, well... What? What's that? Janet's talking on the phone. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't think it's good enough for the general well-being of the state of mind of the programme that we should be have this kind of, well, uh, animosity, which I can sense every day. Well, do you want us to come in there with you? No. No, I don't want that. I wonder, I'm wonder. i just wondering if there's something I can do to make us closer. So I'll tell you what I did. At the end of the programme, there are going to be a couple of boxes of pizza. Pizza? Right. In. Yeah. Because I, I see the police are doing that now. They're going up to places where there are young hoodies, and they're giving them pizza. And apparently it works. So I, I'm going to I'm going to ring Paulo's Pizza. Uh, do you like... Pepperoni? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think we could, after the programme we could bond, you know, and uh, I would share pizza and shoot the breeze, you know, maybe yeah. perhaps Coke, Pepsi. Yeah, uh, that's that's the thing now. I'm glad you brought that up. That's the one thing that I don't know. What do you drink with a pizza? Oh, do you nothing take a cup else. Of tea? Can, nothing else but a Coke. Oh, Janice is red wine. That's red wine? What are you, some kind of well, pervert? Well, in the morning. The only, thing you can, the only thing you can eat with a pizza, yes. drink, drink with a pizza, of milk. Is, is a Coca-Cola, not a Pepsi or Coke. Yeah, but like, I would like a glass of milk. You can't drink a glass of milk with a pizza. That's it's, why I never it, know. It, it would curdle in your stomach. You can't do that. Emma says if you're getting pizza, she'll be back. <laughs> 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 no, but it works in West Belfast, so why wouldn't it work here, you know? It's called uh, pe- Pizza for I Protestants. Was, I was, I, w- I went up to the shop last night for a, a, a tub of butter. You know, a tub of uh, butter? Know, whatever, whatever you buy. Remember, there was a time you, you were sent to the shop for half a pound of butter? 
or a pound of butter. That, that time is still here. No, it's not. It's yes, all, it is. It's all in tubs now. Oh, no, no, that's the old horrible stuff. You still get the half a pound of the pound. That's the traditional butter. The tub is the, the, the almost butter, utterly butterly and all that kind of stuff. You wouldn't eat that. Don't have it about you. And then there's stuff easily spellable and they say it's real butter, but it's not. Because even you put it in the frying pan if you're doing a sausage, mm. it disappears completely. Do you know when you put a knob of butter in the saucepan and it spreads around and goes, oh, but come and bring me a sausage, bring me a sausage. And then you drop a sausage down and it goes, and it cooks your sausage. It's lovely and you eat it. See if you do that with the stuff in the tub, it just goes. And then you put the sausage down and sticks to the pan and goes, Let me up, let me up. This is not real butter, let me up out of this pan. Well, what? We eat, we eat. Uh, Hear me doing a sausage there? Uh, I don't think anyone has ever impersonated a sausage and made it also before. Will I do it again? Yeah. Let me up, let me up out of this pan. Well, I'm a pork sausage. Well, what do we I eat? I have no apple in me. Well, what do we eat? I don't know what you eat. No, the, the butter that I go for, I... I eat us out synthetic crap. Is it? Yes, tell your wife to stop buying it. But I, no, I... Anything I, comes out of a tub is synthetic, it's no good. It has, I to be like, in, has to be in the silver paper. I don't like the, the big... I'll tell you where you get good butter. Do you know where you get good butter? Go to one of those farms. You know those guys no, that I kind of... I don't like butter. Oh, sorry, I thought I just assumed that you did. I don't like butter because it tastes like butter. Yes, butter does. too buttery. Yeah, you know, they mean it turns but, your stomach. Butter. But anyway, on the way. Butter down, has a habit of tasting like butter, yeah. and there's no way around that. Well, I just look for a, a, a particular brand. Okay, listen, this, anyway, this is great. On the way down, this is what I want to talk to you about. It will this take long? Well, on, on the way back from the shop, I spotted, um, I think, four young hoodies. Hoodies. I wouldn't call them hoodies. They weren't wearing hoodies. Scumbags? No, they're four young men. And well, they're these scumbags are not. Come on. It's very hard to say. I know right away. You can tell by the way they look at you. Well, these scumbags are not. They wouldn't speak well, to you. They what, speak. Did they speak to you? All right. No, that's... That's semi-scumbag. Yeah, that's Because you know when they say, all right, well, as soon as you walk past, they'll say something horrible to you. That's what they always say to me. When I'm walking past and they go, are you all right? And I go, I'm fine, lads. Great night, isn't it? And then you walk back and then they go, you're not about up. Yeah. Then you get that. And then if you turn back, you're dead. Well, the four boys were sitting on this sort of bollard, right? Oh, uh, scumbags. Right? Yeah. And they were eating fish and chips or whatever, or something from from the chip. They had the wee, you know them wee, the, those wee boxes yes, with the lids yes, on them? Yes, yes, we know the box with the lids A couple on. of wee boxes. What, Janet? What? Polystyrene box. That's the, yeah. Thanks, Janet. Uh, uh, thanks, Janet. And, uh, you know, and fish and chips. And they were, and I was just saying to myself as I walked past them, you know, I says, that stuff's going to be lying there in the morning. Oh, no, they always go to the, the rubbish bins and no. they put them there. And when, I, and when I walked past it this morning, there, all, <laughs> everything was just lying where they, where, they, where they were sitting. You know, and I thought, yeah. have they no pride? No, no, they have no pride. But if I had time, I was going to pick it up. Oh, you should have done. You, you're always ratting up the kitchen upstairs. I Stop know. washing the dishes upstairs, no. will you, please? No. I came in the other day and he was washing dishes and throwing, putting everything away. Stop it, will you? This is the BBC. We don't expect this kind of thing. Would Jonathan Ross wash his dishes? That's why he's not the BBC, you're right. Yeah. So speaking of behaviour in parks, here's a lady who writes to me about that very subject. Are you finished now? Yeah. That's all right, I thought maybe you had more to say. Yeah. I'd I'm just... not trying to stop you now. No, I discussed uh, yesterday on the Wii programme about people cutting grass and dumping it on a, on a laneway too as well. I'm very upset at that. Instead of putting it into the black bag and putting it into the boot of the car and taking it to the, the local dump. Yeah. I don't know why you never joined the police. You know, I really don't know why. Was it because you were a Catholic? No. But that's what you really want to be. You really want to be a I've always wanted to be a, d- a detective. <laughs> like David Dunsey. I wanted to be a detective. What's going on here? Yes. <laughs> um, my husband came home from work yesterday and told me, I witnessed something today which make my blood boil. Hmm. He was sitting in his ho- lorry at traffic lights and glanced over at four men sitting on a park bench. A woman walked past and unbeknownst to her, would he hear this? Mm-hmm. One of the men jumped up crept up behind her and did a few pelvic thrusts and then went and sat down again and they all had a great laugh. The woman didn't see him, of course. He will do that to the wrong woman someday. I know a girl who does martial arts and I imagine that she is trained to be aware of someone invading her personal space. So she would turn around, lock the man's arm and gently lower him to the ground. Well, that's what he wants, isn't it? It's not me, so don't test me. Anyone who knows me, all I'd do is kick around, kick you in the jewels. And when you're doubled over in pain, I'd finish off the job by kneeing you in the face. By the way, that's not my sick imagination. That's what I was advised to do if ever I need to defend myself. And then, of course, I'd be arrested for assault. Can you imagine someone doing that? Girl walking in the park, the man rumbling behind her going, hey, 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 and then sitting down all laughing. That's the type of people that you, 
must avoid. Not the sort of guys that I want to come along with the, the big black Mariah and say, here, boys. Hey, boys, jump in. With me, boys. Jump in. Yes. Here's a lasso, apso, pop, lost. There's and it's very hard to say for that. You. Ah, just a moment. A lasso, apso, pop has been lost. Now, you've never owned a I lasso. I had baller with that yesterday. Laps, I la- had a lasso absolute too, and I had ballers. Uh, yeah, well, in right. Derry, people call them lasso aspros. No, they do not. They do. You that's that? a wee aspro you no, have. No, they do not. Do you have this notion? <laughs> that's a wee aspro, isn't they it? Do not. Please announce a lost dog lost in Bay Park yesterday. Where's Bay Park? Is it here? Derry, Stoke, London, Derry? Bay I Park? I don't know. Is it? Seriously? I'm not. I'm not, I'm not I don't know. I'm it is, yes. Bottom of Cox, near where I live. <laughs> Why do I know that? not know that? It's a Bay Park, a lasso out oh, near where I live. Yeah. If I find that, I might keep it. Because I haven't got a wee lasso. And as you know, my... Is that the one with a wee brown collar? Well, it's, it's got a pink collar with red hearts. Oh, no. It's, not mine. Uh, it's black with a chest of drawers. <laughs> it's black with a chest of drawers. <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it's black with a white chest and paws. <laughs> I thought that looked like black with a chest of drawers. No, seriously. Lost in Bay Park. Uh, let me start that again. Okay. Lost in Bay Park yesterday here in Derry Stroke, London Derry. A lasso... Apso pup, five months old, black with a white chest and paws, wearing a pink collar with red hearts. Details are at reception here. What's reception's number here? Seven one three seven eight six hundred. Ah, you see, you know that. Yeah. You know that. Jennifer. Hello. Yes, yes. Jennifer. Hello. Yeah. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, sir. You're on the air. Hello. Is that you, Jerry? Yes, you're on the air. In case you think you don't think you are. Oh yes, I can hear you, and you can hear me. Okay. Jerry, I have a, a wee problem, as m- most people do have in their life. Mine is that I had a lovely wee Sony camcorder on which I had recorded over the years a number of film cassettes, all family holidays, etc. Basically sentimental value. Is that the wee one you hold in your palm in your hand? They're quite small? Yeah, well, yes, indeed. Oh, I had one of those ones. They're great. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, uh, my own stupidity, uh, water got into it, and I sent it away to Sony in England. They were very nice. We simply returned it and said that it couldn't be fixed. That's what well, the doctor says to me. There's nothing I can do for you. Exactly. I think it's age-related. Uh-huh. I'm about your run, maybe slightly younger. Oh, early 40s? Well, we'll, we'll not go into that. Okay. But in any event, I, I, I using your wonderful uh, radio station... Yes, indeed. ...would like to appeal to retailers or anyone in Northern Ireland... Yes. ...to... Uh, Phone me and let me know if they can sell me one, because uh, I have all these cassettes and nothing to put it on, and you have to put them on the on the um, camcorder to show them on TV on your own TV. I understand perfectly. I know the machine of which you speak. Yeah, it's a little cradle. I've got the cradle still, but I need a camera. All right, that shouldn't so, be too hard so to get. You I have, have, have you... someone of some wonderful um, family um, films. Uh-huh. Uh, in fact. Unfortunately, I don't have one of you, but I have a still, a still of you taken uh, in the Fiddler's Green oh. in Restrever with my two old aunts. Really? They're nearly your age, one's <laughs> 94 and the other's 88. And, uh, when I, when we, was that taken? That was taken probably about four to five years ago or maybe less. What was I doing down there, I wonder? You were um, joking from one pub to the next. <laughs> that sounds a bit right. Yeah. All right then. Well, the, uh, was I was I reasonably civil to them? Well, you're very nice, and I I was impressed because I had thought prior to that not I was in the background listening to how you um, spoke to them, uh-huh. and you, you had a big heart and were oh. very very nice to older people, probably that, realizing you were going that way yourself. That probably is. But see, a lot of people think that I'm a wee shy, you see, because they, they think that I, they, they don't expect me to be nice, and then when I be nice, they, it surprises them. Well, I mean, it was, it was, a, it was a, not only a surprise, <laughs> but it was a very nice surprise, and I know that underneath that veneer, veneer of rusty steel, yeah. there, there lies a real man. There beats a heart of marshmallow. Yes. Now, what I do... Some people get angry, you know, when they find out I'm nice. I give the details of this over the radio. Oh, yeah, go ahead. It's a Sony. Yeah. It's a DCRP. A DCRP. Yes. C55. Yeah. Digital camcorder. Digital cam corner. That should be too And do I give you my number? Or what? How do I work that? Oh, hold on. Don't be giving your number because a lot of weird people out there. Tell you what, you hang on to the phone. Yeah. And as soon as I say cheerio and tell you to go away, hang on to the phone. Yeah. And then someone may come on and ask you what your number is, but they may not bother their bums. Yes, well, that's life. Mark, we've got you one already. No, no wait, 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 stop. You just said Marty's got one. Marty's got one. But I just want to, te- I want to tell uh, him. Patrick, sorry, Patrick. Yes. Patrick. 
Uh, yes. Marty's got one and he said he'll, he'll sell it to you, but he'll not fall out with you over the price. <laughs> it'll, it'll come at the right price if you make him a decent, you know. Well, that's good. That's so Marty's great. got one. That's and great. he said, you will not fall out. He is said, Marty yeah. in the studio or is he another person? <laughs> out in the... No, we keep him here. Oh, yeah. In case anyone's Marty. looking for a Sony RPC 55. <laughs> Marty's in Belfast. Okay. And well, Marty got a new one, apparently, or something yeah. for his birthday or whatever. So he's got a spare one. So he said, he said it'll come at the right price, not to... Don't worry about that. Yeah, that's that's like, sounds like a man who's getting a man's hopes up. Yeah. Yes, that's it. That's it done. Brought a little happiness into uh, uh, your life. man's life. Right, so we'll give you Marty's phone number. That's and great. Away, and away you go. Okay, you hang on there and Mr. Coyle will may come back to you. Well, that's great. Thank you very much, Jerry. Okay, bye. Bye. Yeah. Now for some unacceptable noise.
What an exciting band that is. That's Circadian. I keep playing them all the time and I often wonder what they're up to and I never know. That's a new d- uh, demo I think they have. I'm not quite sure if they're signed with anybody or not. I don't think they are. They're a bunch of young guys. Well, let, let me know what you're doing, guys, because, you know, I think you're really brilliant and you deserve to be heard more. It's a song called Where I Want to Be. There's a man who writes to me and he said uh, uh, he wants to complain of police brutality. I said, you'll have to ring talk back. He said his pizza was cold. <laughs> Please mention <laughs> Please mention Matthew Hall, who has this morning picked up a bronze medal in the fifty meter rifle shooting final in Delhi. I, for one moment I thought it was Derry. <laughs> uh, a young twenty year old lad from Lawrence shooting alongside far, former Olympic champions, a great result. Northern Ireland had two shooters make the final after another one being Gary Duff from Belfast. That's a great achievement. But at the same time you have to ask yourself the only thing that Northern Ireland seems to be good at is shooting, right? Boxing and bowls. They don't seem to be good in anything else. It seems to be that anything that requires facilities, cooperation in the open air, nobody's good at. No, because of the troubles, we're 30 years behind everybody else. But boxing is very interesting because boxing has never been subject to any kind of sectarian thing. And the boxers always stuck together. And the wee lads got off the street, you see, because if they're on the street, they'd be throwing stones and be. You know, the bowls are the same. Bowls are the same. Yeah, so, in other words, the, the things that we're good at were things that we did to stop getting into trouble. What Basically, a, a, they're no good at running or anything, or, or swimming, you know, but uh, any, anything that didn't cost money that got us off the streets, we're good at it, because we were off the streets for 30 years. All the wee boxers, I mean, you know about the boxing community. There's never, no one's ever asked you, you're Protestant or Catholic in the boxing. It's, all, it's always been equal all the whole way. Uh, Amazing. Uh, Bill's got something wants to get off his chest before the news. Anything medical? I hope not. Where is he? There's one. He wants to get off his chest before the news? Yes, he wants to get off his chest before the is news. Is it for my benefit before the news? No, or because the time. I know about time. No. There's not enough left of it. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Bill, Sorry. I believe you've got something to get off your chest. Sorry, talking about time, the man that made time made plenty, they say. So That's right, yeah. That's right. Um, I just asked the question, someone gave an answer to it. It's, driving lessons cost £25. Yes. Um, per time. But when they go to do a lesson in the same car for the same length of time, it's 90. <laughs> why, why, the, why the difference? <laughs> I don't know. I just don't understand it. I mean, £25, OK, I mean, fine. But when we go to do on the day of the test, it's, oh, we're up to £90. <laughs> sure well, maybe you need special be. kind of learning petrol. I don't know. Uh, yeah. The one that Wonderful I like petrol. The one that I like is when you're stopped uh, for exceeding the speed limit. This happened to be the other day. I was clocking 42 miles an hour somewhere. And uh, some camera caught me. And they sent me a letter and said, I will be fined £60 and deducted three points. And I said, oh, dear, dear, dear. And he said, but you can also go to a course for four hours. And they, they charge you 80 quid, but they won't give you any, 85 quid, but they won't give you any points. So you go and, and the man says to you, you shouldn't speed because you know it's not good. And then you say, oh, I didn't realise that before. You mean if I go fast... Uh, I might hurt somebody. Excuse yes, me. you might hurt somebody. Oh, I never thought of that. I don't want to interrupt, but Bill's got something to say. We're but you're like, don't I know you're, why are you talking when Bill wants to talk? Get him on after the Bill news. There's nothing no... else to say. All right, Bill. What? Sorry. Go ahead, Bill. Sorry, just on the speed. In fact, I mean, I went to court and actually won a case. Well, I had it dismissed. Good man. Although the policeman, although the judge said the policeman, he never heard that uh, someone, a police officer, tells so blatant lies and his life. Oh, stop but, that! No, 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 I, no. We can't talk about no, that. No, but well, that's why not. Not because no, no, we can't call people liars. It's no, 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 no. No, I just talk. No, just, I didn't. just talk. I didn't. Just talk generally, okay? Right. All right. But as I say, I'm hopefully someone will come up with the answer to that one from the twenty-five to ninety. Or is it just a case of exploiting the situation? Well, it's a good one, all right. That's a, a sixty-five quid difference, and it's okay. the same seat, yeah. the same car. Well, maybe, maybe the the the, the fellow who does the test, uh, maybe he gets sixty quid an hour. Janice says that's the insur- they include the insurance on the car. Ah, you pay for that. But the sure, sure, but sure, the insurance is included in the car when they're doing a lesson. Um, well, this is well. What, what, ah, what, Janet. Well, now you see, no, Janet. She Janet's thinks she's daughter, so smart. Janet's daughter just passed her test, and this is this was the breakdown there for her. And uh, twenty-five pound for the use for insurance in the car. Twenty-five pound for the. Much, much for the sandwiches. And because it's the examiner is in the car and not the, the owner of the car, you can yeah, insure yeah, it yeah. differently, apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's... The sandwiches no, and drinks no, no, for the higher Jerry, of the car. Jerry, Jerry, this, isn't, this isn't top of pen for the test. It's I know. Just for the seemed, of the car, not the examiner. Ah, but it's see, just this for the, the higher of the car. This is the way things are. If you're, it's going to cost you 36,000 quid to put your child to university. I mean, you know, things are getting a wee bit dear. 
But anyway, I understand your frustration and I understand I'll defend to the death your right to voice them. We're going to the thank news you. now and God bless you. Anything, anything quickly All to right. say? No, thank you. Thanks, okay. thanks for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. You can't have a man doing that. Do you know what I mean? But you see, they should have the idea that people that would lie. Last Do you know? Night. I can't accept that. On 92 to 95 FM and 1341 medium wave, this is BBC Radio Ulster. And with the BBC News at 11 o'clock, this is Keith Burnside. Engineers in Chile have rescued seven of the 33 miners who've been trapped underground for more than two months. The men are being winched to safety in a specially built escape capsule. Our correspondent, Caroline Hawley, is watching the rescue operation. This unprecedented rescue mission in the remote desert of northern Chile is now in full swing and it's gone as smoothly as anyone could have hoped so far. The 33 men who went down the mine on a routine shift on August the 5th are emerging from the ground as national heroes. Relatives talk of a miracle unfolding and the whole of Chile has been celebrating with them. This is a moment of national relief and pride. The Queen's University student who contracted meningitis at the weekend has been named as Michelle McCauley from Randallstown. A second case has been reported but not confirmed. Both are first-year dental students. The Public Health Agency says that antibiotics will be offered to all first-year dentistry and medical students as a precaution. A police officer suffered minor head injuries after a police Land Rover was attacked in Grange Drive in Ballyclare last night. In a separate incident in the same area, more vehicles and other cars were damaged by petrol bombs before CAM was restored. The American owners of Liverpool Football Club have lost their legal challenge to try to prevent it being sold. The High Court ruled that Tom Hicks and George Gillette do not have the power to oust the board members who support a sale to the owners of the Boston Red Sox baseball team. Now with news of Northern Ireland's first gold medal at the Commonwealth Games, live to Nicky Gregg. Paddy Barnes beat defending champion Yafet Utoni of Namibia 8-4 on points in their light flyweight final to add Commonwealth gold to his Olympic bronze medal and European title. There are four more golds on offer in the ring for Northern Ireland today. Elsewhere, Lawrence shooter Matthew Hall has won a bronze in the 50-metre rifle pro. On to the weather, here's Cecilia Daly. Generally dry today, but rather grey and misty for a while, and there will be more cloud compared to recent days. However, skies will brighten to some extent, with a little sunshine scattered around this coming afternoon. Temperatures should reach 13 or 14 Celsius. The cloud should persist in most places tonight, and fog is unlikely. It will also be fairly mild, with lows of 8 or 9 degrees. BBC News. BBC Radio Ulster. Travel News. In County Fermanagh, traffic controls are in place on the A4 Belfast Road near Enniskillen. Work there is scheduled to last until the end of the month. Meanwhile, the Mill Road in Newton Abbey is closed until 4 o'clock this afternoon. That's just off the Shore Road near Greencastle. On to flights at the George Best Belfast City Airport. This morning's flight from Cork has been delayed to a quarter past 11. While at the International, the flight from Vegar in the Faroe Islands is running 45 minutes late and now due at a quarter past one. And Jordan reporting. Travel News on BBC Radio Ulster. Talk back with Wendy Austins live from the University of Ulster today. We're on the mezzanine at the Jordanstown campus. What are we talking about? University fees. They could be trebled. How's that gone down with students? Great buzz building up here as they head to spend their loans right now in the coffee bar across the way. Then teaching. It used to be for the brightest and the best here. Will there be any jobs left for new graduates after the cuts? We'll hear from the University's Minister, Sir Reg Empey, Education Minister, Katrina Ruan, Vice-Chancellor, Richard Barnett, Debt Council counsellors and random students and of course vitally your calls and comments join us at 12 Thank you, Wendy. I was half listening there and I heard Wendy saying she was on the mezzanine. I thought that was some kind of drug. <laughs> also, uh, a group of men in my old bridge would like to hear the John Gribben record I played yesterday. Yeah, that was a bit special, all right. But I don't have it with me today. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll definitely play it tomorrow. I was going to bring it down today and then uh, something happened. I was interrupted by somebody. I have to talk to you. Do you? Yeah, well, I, after this, right? 
you've, you've scared me. John Rings, uh, apparently you talked about scumbags not speaking to you. Well, you never spoke to me when I saw you in Fiorentini's Cafe in Derry. Ah. That's me, you see? That's you. That's me. Yeah. He thinks I'm a scumbag. Yeah. I can take it, though. I've been called many things. I've often been called a scumbag. I can take it. I'm not everybody's cup of tea, you know. <laughs> This coat and put it on you on this autumn day. It will keep you warm and dry while it's wet and gray. I found it near a chapel in a vivid dream. Faith, the fabric of that jacket, doubt not it is clean. Take this coat, it's like another my mother gave me When I was just a boy and faith a mystery I wore it to the chapel on the Father's hill Faith the fabric of that jacket I am wearing still this coat now I implore you and put it on it is damp outside and cold summer is long gone you might wear it to the chapel at the bell sound faith the fabric of that jacket found on holy ground
What a lovely song. That's Johnny Doohan. you probably heard of him. D-U-H-A-N. He's well known in songwriting circles. He's a singer-songwriter from Limerick. Uh, he used to be with the band called Granny's Intentions many, many, many years ago. I remember that well. And that's a song called The Coat. Uh, I don't normally... That's a religious song. I don't normally play religious songs, but, you know, it's true. The devil doesn't have all the best tunes. That's a good one there. That's a good one. That's called The Coat, and the album is called The Burning Word. And if you're interested in that, Johnny Doohan's uh, website is Johnny, J-O-H-N-N-Y-D-U-H-A-N, and I should say H, hey, the benefit of the the community. JohnnyDoohan.com. There we go. And there's a phone number there if you're looking at it. There's a phone number there too. There's a couple uh, of wee things. Excuse me. If you don't mind. A couple uh, of wee things, yes. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, there's, would you play Paul Hull? singing All the Lies That You Told Me. Oh, Christy Hennessy. Yes, I got that the other day and I had a wee listen to it. I'm not sure it's as good as Christy Hennessy's version. I'm not right. sure. That's well, when you've been asked to play it. But and, and a man's looking uh, an aluminium box <laughs> that you put onto your tow bar. <laughs> and it's, it's for two dogs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Can you uh, help? Yeah, no. Uh, Sean was talking about those those guys eating fish and chips, whatever. Uh, he presumed the same guys would leave the boxes at their arse. He presumed, he presumed right. Yes, he did. Yeah. You can always tell by looking at a person if he's going to leave rubbish behind. But you should have a gun, Sean. I should have. You I, should have a gun. I should have. You should be issued a gun. And you should be allowed, not real ammunition. No. Just, you know, fake. And you should be issued a gun whenever you go for a walk. Anybody you don't you see that you don't like, you should fire at them. They don't know they're blanks. No, but no, you know, no, I would like. I would like a big, no, a big, a big net. What about a tranquilizer gun? You could actually knock them out. No, the thing that I really and want... And could leave a note on their chest. The thing that I really want is a flamethrower. <laughs> But that's indiscriminate, uh, but John. I can't, I can't that's indiscriminate. Yeah. You need something get, that's going to target individuals. If I could get a big net. What about getting a big finger to wag? <laughs> Remember Kenny Everett had a big uh, hand? You get a big uh, finger to wag. Big finger. Wagging at people. Uh, the, uh, can you explain this to me, please? Because you frightened me. I know uh, seriously. All right. Seriously. Okay, you know, sorry. All right. There's, by the way, there's uh, Hughes, Hughes on one, but okay. before Hughes. Yeah. You said that a camera caught you driving at 42 miles an hour. Yes. Yes. Explain that to me. Well, it's obviously a 30 mile hour limit. As you see, where, are you telling me now that the signs you see, cameras in action? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's no man standing I there. I always look for the man. There Here's is the no hedge. man. There's no man there anymore. That man's gone. The man is in the, in the wires. Welcome to the new world, I big brother. That's and, it. and it just comes through your post. Comes through your post, you have no choice about it. A lady rang up and said, uh, do you have a choice? Yes. Uh, of taking the points and paying the 60 quid or doing the course for 85 quid. Yes, you have a choice. You have a choice. I choose not to do the course because I, can't, I couldn't stand with it. It's four or five hours. They tell you what to wear and everything. What to That's, wear when you go you to mean? your course. Well, what sort of course do you I do? I can't remember. You, you go in the a man tell. I don't know so what they the man, do. So of course you just say, look, don't drive at that speed again. Well, that's all they have to tell you. That's but they'll right stretch then. it out for four hours, you see, to make you feel well, as what, if you've learned what, something. What it's like sociology. They, they tell you about the shape of the car and all and what happens when you hit something with a car. You know, and they show you the car all bent up and all. And you show you how your pensioner bends up if you hit her. You know, that kind of thing. But yeah. whereas you know yourself, you know that you shouldn't drive your car fast. You decide to drive your car fast because you make a decision. You said, I'm going to drive fast here. And you decide, I hope I'm not caught. And you know it's wrong. And you know you're not going at 150 miles an hour. And you know that you're going at 42 miles an hour in a 30 mile an hour zone. And you know that's wrong. And you know it's wrong because mm -hmm. that's the law. But you make a decision. You say, I'm in a hurry. I'll take a chance. And you know it's wrong. And you don't need a guy to tell you it's wrong. You know yourself. Yes. But that's why I couldn't spend four hours being told that I'm wrong. That's right. Because well, I know I'm wrong already. I'm going to take the points, I say. Give me the, come on, come on, give me, give me those points. I'll take it on the chin. I'll take it on the take chin. Like How long do you keep the points? Hmm? I got some a few years ago. How long, do you, long before you throw them away? Janet? Jeff? Five years. I Janet think. thinks five years. Maybe somebody knows out I there. Maybe they let us know. Maybe yeah. Google it, Janet, will you please, if you could? Because that's important well, to people. Well, can I ask you this? I am, I am the secret holder of three points. Here's another question. See, I technically I'm made of six now. Oh, why? So and when do, you, when, do you, when are you over the bar? Oh. Many well, points, Gaelic or no, many soccer? No, points put you over the bar. Oh dear. Well, you only get one pint. We're going to only get one pint of over the bar and three for the onion bag. There's in the Gaelic there. There's the one point of the high ball. Uh, you know, and the way where the flag sticks her up and says that's a point. A pint. That's a pint. And if you put her in the onion bag, she's three. Right. And you can punch her in and you can throw her in, you can kick her in, you can shoulder her in, you can hit her in, you can do whatever you like. Do anything like in you football. You can't put her in the head. Can't, wait, wait, will they stop you? You can't hit her. Yes, you can. 
can you? Oh, yeah. I don't think so. It's one of the Christian brothers didn't like you it. Can't hit her. No, because a lot of Gaelic players think that they can't hit the ball because when they were young, the Christian brothers used to hit them for hitting the ball. That so you can hit the ball with anything. You can't hit Whenever it. Whenever I headed the ball, the, the, the Christian brothers go up. And say, ah, you little scalping, heading the ball, little soccer player. Ah, get away of that. Here, take this in the back of your leg. They're all from the south of Ireland, of course. But then again, it instilled in me this, this belief that you couldn't hit a ball. You could do anything in Gaelic football. I mean, if a ball comes at you and hits you in the head, are they going to stop a I foul? Think, I don't think you can score with a head. Oh, you can't. What, what's to stop? You can, you can punch it. Yeah. You can, you, you can handle it. Yes, you can knee thing. it. You can put it under your arse. Yes. You can, why couldn't you hit it? It's only because it's soccer. The Christian brothers didn't like that. Didn't three like years, you your points last. Oh, mine are gone. I've only, I, I'm, I'm virgin. <laughs> oh, I have, have only three. I have no points now. Yeah, but I've got the new three ones, yeah. Yes. But that'll replace the three that I lost. Oh. oh I, what about the wee fella can, from Dungiven going for the gold medal, the wee boxer? Good man. Who is he? Uh, which one? I, I, I don't know anything about I boxing. Know. I, don't, no. I don't want to disrespect this. No, it's because, right. Uh, we wish him well. Know. Uh, we wish him well. Of course. There's yeah. five or six guys going yes, today. That's right. There's yeah. one guy, one, or, one already. Yeah. So I, right. I, 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 I half listened to the news because I was trying to figure out where Wendy was going to get her mezzanine. But tell me this now before you go. <laughs> ah, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Listen, answer me this now then. Have we cameras in Derry? What do you think I was stopped? That's what I don't know. Damn, never go down that road. Where is it? Yeah. Colmore Road. On your way home? That's a liberty. A man going home. It's a fair cop, Gov. Ah, but a man going home. Can't help it. Down the Colmore Road. Caught. Cameras. Caught like a flounder. I'll never drive down there as long as I... And this could put me off driving for life. Do you realise that if you're caught, it'll cost you £60 pounds and three points? But you'd go for the course and say, here, I'll take 60 So if you take, this, if you take, if you, if you take the course, okay. you don't get the three points, but you still get the £60 pound fine? 85 quid. Eh? To pay for the course. What? You, you see, I knew you wouldn't like that. If you go to the course, it's 85 quid. If Plus you, the 60. No. Look, will you that, stop? Right. You have a choice. Yes. You can either pay 60 quid fine and take your three points like a man. Yes. Or else you can go to the course and be bored rigid and pay 85 quid for the privilege of doing so. And they tell you what to wear when you're going there. What have you to wear? I can't remember now, but it's a wee section saying what to wear. But you don't get the three points. You don't get the three points if I, you go to the course. Yes, that's why it's 85, 85 quid. Pound, that's it's, right. it's a you know, the few, few quid for the boy that tells you that you shouldn't drive fast. I know, I wouldn't do it either. No. Yeah. Yeah. I was walking down the street one day and I approached a bridge, which is over a river. I saw a chap, who must have been in his 20s, sitting on the stone wall. As I got closer, the fellow finished a plastic bottle of Coke and just threw it on the ground. I resisted the urge to push him into the river. Mm. Now, do you know what I saw one day? I don't, know, I don't know if I mentioned this or not. Here in Derry, Stoke London, Derry, of course, in the inner walled city, it's built upon a hill. So going up to the diamond, as we call it, which is the mm-hmm. centre of the inside of the walled city, mm-hmm. there are four steep streets, one of which, the steepest one of all, is called Shipkey Street. Mm-hmm. Shipkey Street, which runs from the Derry Guildhall right up to the diamond and it's a very very you know what they say ship streets a slippery street to slide on yes right mm. now I was walking up there one Saturday afternoon and a bunch of guys were walking up in front of me hoodies you know mm-hmm. it seemed alright and one of them was drinking it's not all hoodies that, that throw litter on the ground eh, Jerry well a remarkable amount of them uh, have it's a not of all hoodies you can't just blame the hoodies alright other people do it too but you know th- this particular case yeah. may I say hoodies okay yeah. Man, big bottle of Coke, jumbo bottle of Coke, right? Yeah. Drinking it. Half drunk. It was half drunk, and he went, ah! Yeah. Threw it on the ground. Yes. Okay? It went the whole way down the street, Coke flying out of it, splattered everyone. Ah, didn't splatter everyone. Splatter everyone. It went past, yeah. Ach. And they went the whole way down, and the boys never even looked around. They started laughing. And I said to myself, if Sean was here with a gun, yeah. you wouldn't get 10 yards. That's what I thought. If I were in charge, this would be a better Northern Ireland, let me tell you. If you were in charge, yes. we'd all be we'd be no, we'd all be picking spuds, and we'd be in our beds by seven. Yes, it'd be a better Northern yes. Ireland. Yes, it'd be a better country. A woman has complimented me on my sausage impersonation, right. and wants me to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> this could be a hit. <laughs> okay, I'm a sausage in a pan. I'm using the wrong butter. If I go into a pan with normal butter, I'm there and they're going. Mm, this is great. But if I'm in with. <laughs> If I'm in the synthetic butter, such as the stuff you get out of the tubs, I'm going, let me out of here, let me out of here, I'm sticking to the pan, I'm I'm slick. Do you not use the spray? Uh, Under my arms, yeah. (laughs) The spray is no good. Is it not? It's no good. 
It's no good, I'm telling you. Nothing is any good. Uh, here's a man. Listen, a gentleman what says... What you? What about me? No, Hugh. Oh, sorry. Hugh's on one. I know, Hugh's all right. Uh, James says, I am retired from the fixed penalty processing centre some years, but I believe the following still pertains. One, points stay on your licence for four years. Three years. Therefore, Janet has lied to it's, me. It's, there are text messages coming in all over the place. Okay. Saying three. After nine pounds are awarded, you must go to court for next detection, as only a court can disqualify you from driving. Minimum points are three, and disqualification kicks in at 12 points. The camera was most probably a mobile camera van parked at the side of the road taking video of passing traffic. So maybe the moment has not arrived yet when the man doesn't have to be there. So you lied to me? I didn't see any man. So obviously the man was well concealed. This is one of the things, it's, it's the, uh, the nanny state. It's just one of those things. We have to tolerate it because after all, our personal, freedoms, our personal freedoms are precious. I value your friendship, Sean. Uh, Paul, McC- Paul uh, I have a speed awareness course to go to tonight at the King's Hall complex from five to nine. I let you know what it's all about. <laughs> that must but be one of the things not, he's going to. Could they not build something into the car when when you when it reach when you go over thirty, it goes beep 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 beep. That's 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 a uh, well, that's our personal freedoms being interfered with. No, but, that's you what's know, called a governor. I would like that. No, there's is a thing they got called. It's called a speedometer. You look at it and it says thirty, and you say that's fast. Sure, that's fast enough now. Yeah, but some, you can't be keep looking at your speedometer. All, oh, a glance. All you, you don't. Yeah, you I know that. But glancing. You, you could be talking. You could be chatting. You could be. You know. The, the, I know. You could for for heaven forbid, but you could go over thirty miles and earn a thirty mile. Uh huh. But if a wee wee beep beep come on. You immediately lift your foot off the accelerator. Knock stop. Uh, a lady complained that yesterday I said that uh, uh, Shelley's ver- uh, book of Frankenstein was uh, published in 1918, whereas in, f- in fact it was 1818. Uh, people are so fussy, I aren't know. they? Uh, aren't they? Yeah. It's like nothing else to do. Where's Hugh now? He's probably bored <laughs> in tears. <laughs> well, I am. Yeah. He's on uh, one. All right, then, okay. Uh, oh, there's a man saying unspeakable things about Stephen Nolan. Oh, I wish I could read that. I'd love to read that. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Jay. Hugh, I'm sorry to keep you like that. Brandon Jay, good job. I'm not paying for phone call only. Okay, that's a bad old line you have there. I've said it back here, Jay. Spent some sorry, for you, sorry, man, for All the time he waited, looking at an old rotten line. Would you not notice that all the while he was there? You not notice an old rotten line? Could you not find the smell coming down the lane? No. Listen, this is no good. Will, will you, will, will, what, what's he doing? I, I don't know. Will you ring us back at a landline? No, wait a minute. He's, a, he's in a lorry. Are you, are you in a lorry? I said to the tractor, I'm stopped, AJ. You see, he's in a tractor. Oh, that's it. No, that's better. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Sorry for being so harsh to you there, but, you know, you weren't cooperating. Yeah, these farmers walk never stops, you know. What did he say? He's, he's, he's echoing. A farmer's work never stops. Okay, right, yeah. Yes, uh, can I do anything for you today? Jay, my nephew called him yesterday and his girlfriend is looking for an Irish Barbie doll. She collects Barbie dolls. An Irish wife. Barbie doll? Yes. Is there such Barbie, a thing? You do get an Irish Barbie doll. Do you know what the Barbie man is called? you know that, Sean? No. Bruce? Ken. Ken. Oh, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ken Bruce. <laughs> no, the Barbie man is called Ken. Oh, oh Ken could come in and sit on our knee. <laughs> We could dress him. <laughs> Put a little wig on him. And say, come on, Ken. <laughs> you do that. Let's get married, Ken. Get oh. Ken married to a Barbie doll. Anyway, this man's an attractor. Uh, he's a, 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 okay. Are uh, you looking for a fee, an Irish, what her name be? Colleen, I suppose, I imagine. Uh, yeah. Do they make an Irish Barbie doll? Apparently they do, yes. Do they? I, know, I, I don't know whether to be pleased with that or not. Do they make an Ulster Barbie doll, but... Are we are we red hand? <laughs> do, they, do they make an do they make an Irish Barbie doll? <laughs> what's that we what's that we red hand you have? Oh I'm from Ulster. <laughs> anyway. Stop it. What that can you not have a laugh? What's wrong with you people? All right then. Okay. Well, we're looking for an Irish Barbie doll. Does anyone know what it's called? Fill in the box if possible. Odds on Colleen. I'd say odds on Colleen. Are you not going to ask you what's he what's he what's he drawing today or what's he working at? Or? No, that's the kind of thing you do. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you ask. No, you go ahead. Well, I'm you not, do I don't when care. you ask you where's he from? Where's he ringing from? Go on, you do all that stuff. Come oh, on. go on, you. Go on, Q, you. where are you ringing from? Where are you working? I'm ringing from Kingston and I'm drawing slurry before the slurry man comes in. You see, he's drawing slurry. 
I see. It's before the slurry ban. Yes, the slurry ban comes in then this week. What do you mean, forever more a man? No, you can't spread slurry during the winter months. Can you not? Can you not? Is he yes. getting interested now? <laughs> not until, and and as far as you know, not until January. Really? Yeah. Yes. I well, never knew that. How did I? I thought you could just throw it about any time you wanted. You can't. You have to stop now. And you have to. You have to get it out quick before. Yes. Yeah, get it out now. Get the slurry out quick. Before I think it's before the fifteenth. Mm, the slurry. Oh, this may seem a very silly question, Hugh, but what what is the slurry used for? I oh, forgot. Well, you all right? You answered, Mr. Anderson. The slurry with the syringe on. What's top. it used for? Uh, I don't know. Yes. What? What? Why, what what's the slurry used for? It's a fertilizer. Slurry it? grows grass. It's fertilizer. fertilizer. Uh, but what does it grow? You say. Uh, you see, I thought it grew spuds. No. Oh, no. No. Oh, what no, you need no, for no. spuds are sl- potatoes. Spuds grow spuds. Eh? Spuds. Small seed potatoes. You live in the seed city. You spuds. live in a city that exports thousands and thousands of tons of seed potatoes. What do you think they use them for? Mini chips? No. I just thought it helped the spuds on their way. No, 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 no! You get pretty fertilizer for that. Thought, you see, I didn't know that. So the the, the fertilizer is just for the grass. Yes. Or the no, slurry is no. just for the grass. Yes. That's Did you right. see the program on with John Hume the other night? Uh, I remember, we talked about that. Uh, the greatest Irish man in the world. I watched it last night, and I've got a reason for saying this. Uh, I watched it last night with Miriam O'Callaghan. It was wonderful. It was a great program, wasn't it? Yes. Did you see that? I it was great, great, about it. great program. And it reminded me. I remember one time talking to John Hume years ago. And he said to me, he said, you know, it's very difficult here in Northern Ireland trying to attract, uh, I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, but I'm paraphrasing what he said. He said, it's very difficult to attract business here. This is years ago, you know, before things got really got going, you know, when the troubles were still going. Mm. He said, it's very difficult, he said, because whenever you bring businessmen here, you know, uh, uh, and you have to drive them to Belfast, he said, you can't, I, 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 don't, I don't drive them to Belfast. And I said, why? He said, because if they go on the road from Derry to Belfast and they're stuck behind a slurry wagon, they could be there all day because you can't pass because the road is so horrible. So John Hume used to live in terror of Japanese businessmen meeting you on the road, Q. <laughs> because you can never, can never get past you and the smell of shite was awful. Oh, no. And the week you could say, what's going on here? Wake up, where's the passing lane? Oh, there is no passing lane. Oh, uh, shall we not get past this guy? No, 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 we can't. No, there is no... Well, one. when 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 is Hugh supposed to spread his slurry in the middle of the night? Oh, being sarcastic. No, now. no, but you know what I mean. I know, but no, what what I mean uh, what, is, what, what, I'm not complaining about you. I'm yeah. saying that the roads are so narrow that you couldn't pass a slurry well, it's not van. Hugh's fault then. I didn't say it was Hugh's fault. Well. I said because he couldn't get past people like you. Yes, Hugh. What time would you get up in the morning? That the wonder of you. Well, I've, I've two children, and you could be up then from from maybe half four or five o'clock on. The, ha- right, and and what time would you would you would you finish your day's work? I finish at six o'clock. There you are. What time did I you say? I woke for a up, farmer. What time, what time do you get up at, did you half say? Half four. You see... Half four or five o'clock. That man gets up at half four and half five o'clock, yeah. right. The other week, Chris Moyles, yeah. who makes £500,000 a year, yeah. complained bitterly about yeah. getting up at that time in the morning and he didn't get paid for two months. If you were making £500,000 a year, Hugh, and you weren't paid for two months, would you complain? I would lie in my bed at dinner time. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck to you, sir. And uh, what, did, what did he want? To, what did you want again, sir? What, what did you? A Barbie, Barbie doll. doll. Yes, they exist. We've got them. We've got them here. Have we? Well, we haven't Still got them. But we've got, eh? eBay seven fifty. eBay, they're seven fifty. Seven pounds fifty. Seven pounds fifty on eBay. What's 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 her name, Janet? What's the Irish dolly's name? It just says Barbie, just says Barbie Festival of the World Irish Dance Doll. Irish Dance Doll. Yeah. It's yeah. probably called Jean. Jean Butler. Yeah, so this girl, as long as she qualified as an Irish uh, well, that's, that's what it is. That's so what if it is. you go to eBay, mm-hmm. you... Well, uh, but eBay is... is you can't really... You know, it's, it's dodgy. It's not dodgy. It's, sorry, it's not dodgy, but, you know, you're not certain of getting it. Is, is there none on, uh, on on anything else, on Amazon or anything? Try Amazon. Well... Try Amazon, Amazon under Barbie dolls. Uh, Janet, try Janet's Amazon. To, Janet says she's trying to take a call. Oh, she's complaining about what she has to do here? No. She's <laughs> complaining about the volume Janice, of work? Janet had Seamus, but then she lost him, and she's trying to get him back. Well, that's the story of my life. Uh, uh, so, Janet, well, uh, never mind Seamus, he'll come back. Why don't uh, you Google? Why don't you go? Why don't I you... don't have time to Google stuff. What am I, some kind of... Janet says she doesn't have time. I'm either. sorry, we're imposing upon her. Uh, Hugh, I'm the presenter here. 
Ask you, is EB any good to him? EB any good to you, Hugh? Yes, it is, yes. Well, yeah, try that one. Yeah. You get, you'll definitely get one. It's a, a, a night. What is it again? Festival of Britain, Irish. What is it? Irish Dance Stall. Irish Dance Stall, that's what it's called. But I, if I were you, Hugh, and uh, I, I, I assume that you're maybe a wee bit computer literate, that maybe the rest of us, can you do, do a wee bit in computer? Well, I get the way to do it for me. Okay, well, try Amazon.co.uk and I'll see if they've got that. And I'd say you get it right away because eBay, you have to bed and wait, you know. Yes, yes. But yes. there's one there anyway if you're bait, as they say. All right, man, got long may the slurry I, flow from you. I thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. You look, Bye. You that, that came out the wrong way, didn't That's, it? That like came the, out the wrong like way. Like the slurry, yes. I didn't mean that. He was a nice guy, wasn't he? Yeah, but you were very, very bitchy to I wasn't bitchy to him. You were, you. I'll be on my way Down the road to where I must go There's nothing between you and me I'll take a boat down the river, my love And sail away to the sea I'll sail away to the sea What will you take to remember me by? I've no money to buy you a smile I can't say the words to you farewell so I'll carry them with me a while down the road to where I must go there's nothing between you and me I'll take a boat down the river my love and sail away to the sea I'll sail great song from a great band called The Wants, or as we call them here, The Wants. Uh, that's a song called Sail Away to the Sea, and that's from an album called... Uh, oh, it's just called The Wants. Sorry. Yeah, that's what it's called. And uh, that's, they're from uh, Newfoundland, and there's a couple of bands, two or three of them, coming over from uh, Newfoundland and uh, Cape Breton and those places. Uh, I think it's a week after next to do some gigs here, and I think uh, I tried to get one of them, but Alan Simpson was in too quick. He's so very quick, Alan, you know. And they're like a shot. Uh, he's, he's got, I wanted them, but he's got them on his programme on the Thursday. And, uh, well, I'll tell you who I've got on that particular day, Andy Irvine. Very excited about that. Uh, a genius, if there ever was one. Right, uh, some messages here from the people outside. Uh, please plug this show. It's called The Boat Factory. 
It's a new play. I saw that advertised by actor Dan Gordon and the Crack Theatre in Coal Island on Friday night, the 15th of November at 8pm admission. I wonder, now it says here Dan Gordon, and do you know what it says in uh, inverted commas, sorry, in brackets after it? Yeah. Red hand, look. Oh. I wonder how Dan feels about that. Uh, about being known as Red Hand Luke. I mean, you know, I mean, he's done so many parts and then suddenly, that's a, I blame the whole in the wall gang for that. He's, he's got that round his neck like a albatross for the rest of his life. Tell Sean to buy a Garmin Satnav, G-A-R-M-I-N. Maybe a choir would be a better term. The newer models show the speed of the vehicle and the speed limit. If you exceed the speed limit, your actual speed shows in red. Some cars do have the beep beep Sean requires, but this generally only works at speeds in excess of 40 miles an hour. So there is a thing that goes beep when you go over. You see? You were right. Someone has thought of that. Also, uh, some other messages here. Oh, this thing is acting up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's acting up. Look. It's like the thing that says welcome. It's going welcome here. No, it goes your, your thing isn't working, it says. Hold on a second, get this one. Um, what are you reading? I'm reading things that are coming in. Do you think I do nothing in here? It's all right, you people sitting there picking your nose and, and Janet fixing her nylons. <laughs> Ronnie Greer Blues Band with Anthony Toner and special guest Kieran Burke this Saturday, the 16th in the black box. Go along to that. And also, um, here's a man from Mobile, Mobile, Alabama. He says, hello, Jerry, and the other person. Oh. <laughs> you. Your show is fabulous. I am in Mobile, Alabama, and it's great to hear a voice from home. I left Derry Stoke, London, Derry over 55 years ago. And a few weeks ago, I heard a request from someone who worked in McIvers in Quigley's Point. I thought it was only me that was still alive from there. Is McIvers still going in Quigley's Point? I used to work in Green Bank, but left for America 55 years ago. I probably won't be back at this stage. To hear the old names was great. Johnny the Gate, Mary Carlin, Paddy Falcara, The Bird, and all the others. We had such crack, but no money. Keep the show going, Sean. It's Jerry. It's great. Get rid of Sean. I added that bit. Uh, it's, do, 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 well, he's not from Derry at all. Well, I, I'm just reading this stuff, you know. Do you think I'm listening to it? I think I'm trying to figure it out. I just read it when it comes. And Oh, listen, I want you to phone a man about a thing. That co- man, see that man's been living out in America for 55 years? Yes. Has he got a big house? <laughs> it seems to be nowhere near the sea, so you's not interested no, in it anyway. What 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 the weather like? What the climate bill? Like? Mobile, Alabama. No, what that mm, it sounds hot, warm to me. Hot, yeah. yeah, it sounds good. Be great yeah. just up your alley. And does he swimming pool? Yeah. Uh huh. And would he like people to come? Uh, do you know, well? He visit. sounds like a man would like the people, but people to come and talk to him about dairy for yes. hours on end. Yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. sounds like your sit, kind of mission. Sip yeah. A few beer right and, up yeah, your yeah, alley. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. okay. I'll yeah. give you his email. Look, my mobile phone isn't working now. Look. What Janet kind of a country is this? <laughs> Look, my mobile phone's stuck. Look what at do you that. What your mobile phone for? They have a program, I'm, a radio program. I, I'm looking for, I have to do so many things because you two won't do anything. I have to do everything myself. I'm looking for... Do you know what I'm looking for? I'm looking for the phone number of a man I'm going to interview next and you have no idea who he is and you're in there supposed to be helping me. And my phone's stuck. Did you read any of your text messages? Where are they? In the machine. Oh, sorry. Uh, um, uh, no, I can't reach the machine from here because I don't have an elastic arm. I'm too busy putting on all the records, talking, fixing the mic and making sure everything's all right whilst you sit in there and do nothing. Whereas, whereas I have an elastic arm, I can reach into the next room. Yeah, but you can get off your seat. I can't get off my seat. Go away a moment. A uh, gentleman writes to me and he said, Hi there, Fenster and McManus otherwise known as Flanagan and the two McConnellogues, which is a two <laughs> different thing entirely. This, this is about football. There is a time known to every man... To, and and I, could I, I could include I you in this. I what that means. <laughs> Flanagan and the <laughs> two McConnellogues? No. Uh, there was a time known to... I'll, I'll tell her. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, three guys used to hang around together. Um, there is a time known to every, <laughs> every man. With the exception of Quasi... Are you listening? There's a time known to every man with the exception of Quasimodo and Stephen Nolan when in the nightlife scenario we strike gold and Kurt, as or as we say in country areas, click with or tackle a woman of great beauty. The next night we go one better and raise the bar with an even attractive woman and then the next night... Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever done that? What? Have you ever? Now, can I ask you seriously about what? this? Have you ever had a night that sticks out in your memory 
when you walked in somewhere, maybe a bar, a club, dance hall, whatever it is, and you saw the most beautiful girl you ever saw in your life, and you said to yourself, I'm going over there. And you went over, and she went home with you. Does that ever happen to you? No. I know, I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's happened to me on many an occasion. And then the next night, you get this wonderful confidence. And then the next night, you might you see someone else who's, you know, just as beautiful. And you, and you know, because the night before, you've been successful, you know. And you say to yourself, I'll do this again. And it happens again, right? And you think you're some kind of Lothario. And then the next night... Nobody will entertain you whatsoever. <laughs> no, I used to look for the you know the girls, and you would say that she's a beautiful girl, she's the nicest girl in here. And then I waited to see who she went home with. <laughs> <laughs> I would never think it. You know, you I used to ask girls home, and I'd say, "Listen, can I leave you home?" That's surely all right. I said, "Where will I meet you?" Be there in the hall outside the toilet, and I go out and stand outside, and they go to the toilet, and never come back. They always climbed out the window at the back. Anyway. There, this is a thing. Anyway, this man goes on and he also connected up with football. It puts us in our place when we finally are refused many times and end up with a dog. And let us taste the ecstasy of punching above our weight and then the soul crushing turmoil of underachievement. And then he goes on to talk about our national football team. In other words, he compares our opponents to various women as to who is important to beat and who isn't. For example, our football team and today's cowpat of a result, of course referring to the relative failure to conquer the great Faroe Islanders, the draw with the Faroe Isles, which I thought was some kind of Egyptian independent state. <laughs> Funny. We have swapped kisses with the Linda Brands and the Christine Bleakleys of the football world, that is England and Spain. So Linda Brands is England, Christine Blakely is Spain. And now after Slovenia, who's Slovenia? Zoe Salmon. And the Italy draw. Do you know who Italy is? Yeah. Pamela Ballantyne. We ended up covered in love bites and in bed with Anne Whittacombe, which are the, is the Faroe Islands. This will not do. I'm massing my own private army, whom I met on Facebook, consisting of unemployed Serbian mercenaries fresh from a weekend of rioting in Belgrade, hideous-looking brutes with foreheads you could land a Chinook chopper on, dark, deep-set eyes like those on a great white and nationalist tattoos etched everywhere. I imagine in downtown Belfast they'll blend in well with the locals. So we few, we glorious few, lineal descendants of Slobodan Milosevic, await the national team at Aldergrove. Italians pelt their disgraced football team with their national vegetable, the tomato. And I feel we should do the same. A turnip thrown at 30 miles an hour should entice them to stick an onion bag. And if this happens again, I'll carry out a coup d'etat and install Martin O'Neill as manager. And who is centre forward? For? Bring him on the last 20 minutes. Paddy McCourt. What? Paddy McCourt. Bring him on. Goal scorer. They won't, make a, they won't let him play. I know he's he is. Hurt. He's injured. He's not, he hasn't been injured this last year, has he? he? So he's been out and then out and like a filler's elbow. Martin O'Neill, I know he's a Catholic, but every time I see his beady dark eyes and hooked bill, it reminds me of what? Nothing less than a snipe! I'm playing the pipes again. Oh no! Yes, you can't no. stop me. You can't stop me!
How hard was that to stick? That's just for Willie. Uh, that's the Red Hot Chili Pipers. That's uh, a track from their new album, which is called Music for the Kilted Generation. Uh, who's Paddy McCourt, people are saying? Well, Paddy McCourt is a footballer who now plays for Celtic and he used to play for Derry, uh, Derry City. And he's just about the most talented footballer uh, in Northern Ireland has produced since George Best. And if you don't believe me, check him out on YouTube, Celtic, some of the goals he scored for Celtic. But Nigel Worthington Worth- Worth- doesn't seem to wreck no, him at all. No, he's hurt. Does he's he? injured. No, but I mean, he hasn't been injured this last year, has he? He's been, has he? Uh, he hasn't been playing regularly with Celtic either. I know, but the time... Ach, not, stop, will you? He's not much Stop fit. trying to be so... Oh, I, I'll tell you what. If he was half fit, he would have scored two goals there last night. He hasn't been playing for Celtic this last... Seven matches. He hasn't been playing for Northern at all. He's got a bad busted shoulder. Always. What about the times he's playing for Celtic? And we're, anyway, stop ah. talking football. Headers are in fact allowed on the GAA matches. Tell Coilers to stick to his groundy ball game. Also, our done given boxers called Eamon O'Kane. I once remember Jim thumping me when we were at school. I still bear the psychological scars. That's a man who's thumped by a medal winner. <laughs> Uh, I was standing at the bar one night, says Michelle, and the man said to me, can I buy you a drink or would you rather have the money? <laughs> <laughs> and I told you, before, you know, a man said to me, I had a dream about you last night. I said, did you? He said, no. Another man said to me, what's a woman like you doing in a beautiful place like this? And let's not forget the old... Oh, no, I'm not reading that one. <laughs> right, text message from the great unwashed. Jerry, why on earth... Do you bring that bore Nolan on every morning to listen to him telling people every day about his weight for the past years? He's a total pain in the ass. You know, he is. He is, you know. Hi, Jerry and team. Love the Kate McCusker track. Uh, well, Kate's going to come in, hopefully, uh, if we can get a good date uh, in a couple of weeks' time to sing a few songs for us. Would you please play it again? Thanks for all the cubbies. Uh, Dublin Road and Oma. Uh, Jerry, saying that you're for reading your text today, maybe you'll read this one. I waited 30 minutes yesterday for Nolan, only for him to say, right, we're moving on. So I never got to say what I wanted. Again today, I waited 20 minutes and never got on. I just wanted to ask him about his excess skin now that he's lost five stone. What's he doing with his skin? But alas, I never got on to say it, so please read this out. And uh, that's from Declan Curry. <laughs> no, it's not. Hi, Jerry. Just back from our weekend at Stroke City. What a fabulous city you have. We walked the walls, visited the Tower Museum, Free Dairy Corner, many wonderful bars. Please give a special mention to the staff of the Beach Hill Hotel uh, who made our stay so enjoyable. That's a nice hotel, that. That's in the waterside area of Derrick Stroke, London, Derry, in Ardmore. Isn't that where it is? Ardmore mm-hmm. kind of area. A fellow goes into a pet shop. Oh, he's a joke. A fellow goes into Troubles joke. Fella goes into a pet shop, leaves a bomb in the counter. It's an old joke. And says, five minutes to get out. Part says, that's all right, but you're not giving the tortoise much of a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, to save yourself saying www, say all the Ws. Thank you. Jerry, would you please ask, here's a little thing for you. Will you do something in Daniel's voice? Don't know. Oh, hedging your bets, eh? Mm-hmm. I want you to send my sister Grace a get well soon message. She isn't too well. And it would cheer her up no end. That's from Linda. Why don't you, do you know? Her name is Grace, and that's from her sister Linda. She's not too well. Hello, she, Grace. How are you, Grace? Well, uh, well, I heard that you're not too well, and I'm sorry. How did you know that? I'm sorry because I'm saying get well soon to her. No, it doesn't. You know, Who told you she wasn't well? You. No, it was Linda. Oh, Linda. Sure, I didn't read the, the whole of the email. Thing. Uh, is that it? No, do more. Well, I, well I, I, you know, at this time in the programme, I, I don't really feel up to it because I'm, I, I'm, I'm slightly hungry, you know, and I, I don't, I don't give my best performances when I'm peckish. Do you understand? Yes, yeah, uh, not what yeah. I heard. <laughs> no, honestly, if you had a, if you had approached me earlier in the when programme you're, when you're fresh, <laughs> all right, I'd have been off for it. That's all right, Dan. Thank you. Uh, you can pick up a Sony camcorder on eBay, and you can get uh, what did you say earlier on on Amazon.co.uk? There is an Irish Barbie doll, but it's forty quid. Uh, so it's seven fifty on eBay, but that's only where the current bid is. Do you know what I mean? But this is a new one. You get a new one on Amazon.co.uk, uh, an Irish doll, I don't know, it's an Irish dancing river dance thing for 40 quid. So there we are. That's, you know, that sounds reasonable enough, doesn't it? There's three, you think, isn't there? Is there? There's three, yeah. Uh-huh. Choice of three. This thing's acting up again. It's acting up again. What about All right, David? Then. Okay, what? What about David? He's on the line. Good morning, David. Good morning, Jerry. David's the proprietor of No Alibi's uh, bookstore in uh, Botanic Avenue, which specialises in thrillers and whodunits. Isn't that right? 
That's correct. Um, across the board, from all over the world, great Indeed. thrillers and mysteries. Did you have James McElroy down there the other night? What are you, oh, sorry, what's his name? James, El, what's James, James Elroy. Sorry, I, I knew I got that name wrong. What a big name. What was he like? He was um, a wonderful handful, so he was. Um, <laughs> he, 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 in, in the best possible way, um, uh, James Elroy is not uh, is not renowned for being a, a wallflower, shy and quiet. He he tends to let you know what he's thinking and saying in the most vociferous and expletive-ridden manner you can imagine. And what a man! What a I mean, the man who wrote L.A. Big, Confidential, uh, amongst yeah. others. Yeah. So what? A big, so, a big man with big ideas, usually about himself. <laughs> all right then. So uh, you didn't want to give him too much drink then, is that it? Well, I, I don't think he's had anything like that for a very long time. Oh, Gareth. was that right? Oh, did he have? A, yes. Was he heavy on it at one stage? He, he was. He was renowned for, and it, it, I'm not telling tales because he admits it himself. He uh-huh. was renowned for his um, indulgence in various forms of. Uh, it should have fitted uh, right in uh, here then. <laughs> well, maybe not. <laughs> well, you have something else coming up, David. I know. We have. We, we, we actually. This is possibly not James. Notwithstanding, is probably one of our most exciting events. We have a lady called Kathy Rikes coming um, to, to the shop on Saturday. Well, to say she's coming to the shop would be a bit of a lie because the shop isn't big enough to hold the number of people who are, who are wanting to come to this event. Um, she's one of these uh, forensic science thriller writers, um, but unlike a lot of the, the, the writers who work in that field, she actually lives it and does it herself. Um, she trains FBI agents and uh, she's worked for the United Nations on various um, genocide trials in Rwanda and the former Yugoslavian republics. And she really has a, a credibility and an expertise that goes beyond what any of these other science or forensic science writers have. And she's a damn good writer as well. All oh, right. So that's on Saturday. Is that in the afternoon or night? It's, in, it's at 7 o'clock um, in the Medical Biology Centre, actually, appropriately enough, uh, which is on the Lisburn Road, um, Saturday the 16th at 7 o'clock. The Medical Biology Centre on the Lisburn Road. Where, where is that yeah. exactly? Where is that near? It's, um, do you know where Elmwood Avenue is? It's yes. directly across the road from Elmwood Avenue. Um, we, we have had some, some, some wisecracking folks asking if there's going to be any sort of practical experiments on as well. But no, I think she'll just be there to talk about her work and talk about her new book, which is called Mortal Remains. Mm. Well, that sounds all a bit weird. Well, not weird, but a wee bit grotesque, isn't it? That kind of, you well, know, watch the bodies being d- dissected sort of thing, isn't it? Well, well, to be honest with you, even though I read the books and I, I like selling them, I don't really want to watch any of that sort of stuff, you know? No. Um, <laughs> but, it- uh, no, I think it's going to strictly be a, a, a an interview and a, a talk and, and, and maybe a bit of a reading as well, a book signing. OK, so that's 7 o'clock on Saturday. And are there some places left? Can people go there? There are indeed, um, though I have to say I, I, we, we have been inundated with people um, asking you know, for tickets and things like that. Well, well. Um, So it, it, is, it is quite amazing. It's just I, I wanted to tell people about it because it's an opportunity. The, these authors don't come to this part of the world very often and we've had two in, two in one week and it's quite fantastic. Yeah, OK, David, because so, some people may not be aware that you're going to be there tomorrow and you'll be, if, you, if, you're undated, if you're inundated by now, you certainly will be later on today. All right, well, then. I think David, so. Best of luck to you, David. Thank you. Jerry, thank you very much indeed. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Virgil Cain is a name and I served on the Danville train Till Stormer's cavalry came and tore up the tracks again In the winter of 65 we were hungry just barely alive by May the when it fell, it's a time I remember oh so well. The night they drove old Dixie down, and the bells were ringing. The night they drove old Dixie down, and the people were singing. They went la 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 la
That's a band, of course, the night they drove old Dixie down. Now, a lot of people inquiring about that uh, lady uh, authoress, I can't remember her name. Uh, I don't know where it is. It's Lisburn, somewhere at Lisburn Road. Uh, ring No Alibis in Botanic Avenue and they'll, they'll tell you all about that. And there's a guy, you, Sean, you've just been asked on Facebook, what is the longest time you've gone without taking a shower? Maybe you could answer that. <laughs>